No. They talk about the Cowboys every day. You understand there's 31 other NFL teams. How many Major League Baseball teams are there? 30? 32 NHL teams. They only talk about the Cowboys. How about that? They're America's team. And by the way, it's all just marketing. Have you watched the documentary on America's team or the football life? It was just marketing. It was the late 70s. But the football guys didn't like it. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It is. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new week. Welcome to the RP Show. Thanks for joining us wherever you may be across the land. And to Canadian uh, sports fans around the world, I'm Rod. He's Darren. Are you ready to open a brand new week? Oh, yeah. Are you happy it's a short week? No. Me either. No. (laughs) When you love what you do, you're not really happy in a four-day week. I know. But anyways... We'll muddle through. We'll make the most of it. All right. I know you're ready to talk sports. Uh, How do you do? Thanks for joining us for coffee today here in Canada's daytime sports talk show. It's a big one. Uh, Here on the warm-up, we're going to run the gamut of all sports, but throughout the next two hours, it's mostly a hockey theme. We'll be joined by longtime NHLer Jason Strudwick, former Islander, Oiler, and Canuck. He'll be joining us out of Edmonton, talking about the free agent frenzy so far in the National Hockey League. I think just about everybody's signed now, right? The big ones are off the board. Yeah. Pretty much everybody out there. They're probably into the second or third wave, as they call it, in free agency. Anyway, Struds will be with us. Peter Labardia, the Calgary Flames broadcaster, will be joining us from southern Ontario, where he makes his offseason home. Braden Coburn, the Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning, will be with us as well. We're excited about that. And Ty Magali of Ohm Hockey Systems, talking about how they're doing individual uh, coaching of hockey players here in the pandemic. So that's the guests, and uh, let's roll to the Quick Six Show topics. Jordan, let's do it. There we go. Slight delay. Uh, Number one, again, our show topics are of importance to me, maybe not to the sports world. Number one, Taylor Hall to the Sabres and Alex Petrangelo to the Vegas Golden Knights. I'm going to fly through these and come back on them, okay? Point two, the Dak Prescott injury. It's my commentary this morning on Cat Country 98. I feel terrible for Dak. He made this decision to sign a one-year contract, the franchise tag. So, yeah, he feels terrible. Listen, I like him, but I wanted Andy Dalton to start in week one anyways. So I don't think the Cowboys are in dire straits. They're not in as bad a shape as Dak is. That's very clear. Point three, Major League Baseball is down to the Final Four, if you haven't noticed. And it's exciting. The League Championship Series. Where the Braves are up one nothing on the Dodgers. The Rays are up 2 nothing on the Houston Astros. And I'll tell you what, they've never really had to contend with the NHL playoffs or the NBA playoffs. They've always had to contend with the NFL this time of year, Darren, but it just seems like they're pretty far down the list, no? Yeah. No, it's That's true. what it feels like. like yeah. I'm paying attention to it, but I'm not necessarily watching it. Point four, Vegas Golden Knights players upset at a lack of loyalty. Hmm? Er? Is that what it's come to now? And you see the Chicago Blackhawks players I saw in The Athletic. They're upset that the Blackhawks are going into a rebuild. Have you ever heard the term inmates running the asylum? They can't, right? You know that? They can't. Vegas Golden Knights players, for all of you watching in Las Vegas, it's our seventh highest city for viewership, so I know you're watching. I didn't see you parading around with a Stanley Cup at the end of the playoffs. That means you better be on your toes. There's not going to be loyalty until you win a Stanley Cup. Sorry. What makes them think? We're just going to get comfortable, put our feet up here in Vegas, and never leave for the rest of our lives. It doesn't work that way. Have I completely misread this, or are you on board with this? I'm on board. I'm on board. I love loyalty in sports, though. Don't get me wrong. I love the loyalty in sports, and I, and I understand the Vegas side. They feel like they're building something, so you want to stick with the guys who you've been building with. But at the same time, you didn't win. So you're not good enough, and you need to get better. Alex Pitrangelo makes them better, right? So obviously guys come in to make you better. Other guys got to leave. That's how it works. Typically. So I, don't, I don't know where they're coming from that there's a lack of loyalty. This is news. Da, 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 da. Ask Marc-Andre Fleury about loyalty in Vegas. There isn't any, or any other team for that matter. Now, we're going to sprinkle in people's comments as we go, and thanks for joining us for coffee today. Richie Leone, punter to the stars. Last I saw, he's kicking for the Seahawks on their practice roster. He's just written, and said, written in and said, are we going to talk CFL bubble? Hold on to your bingo cards, Richie. I'm, I'm getting to it. 
I've just called an audible at the line of scrimmage here, point five. I scribbled out Tuesday night football, which involves your Titans. Sorry, we're not going to talk about that. How did I forget LeBron saying Sunday night when they handed him the LeBron James, the uh, Larry O'Brien trophy? Are they going to re- rename it the LeBron James trophy? Maybe. He wants some damn respect. I'm just going to tell you something, LeBron. Respect is earned. It's not demanded. And for you demanding it and opening your mouth all the time with idiotic things like that, that's why you don't have respect. He's now the first player who has been named Finals MVP three different teams. He's the first player in NBA history. Just let your play do the talking. How be you stop doing the talking, LeBron? Because you're the reason that you don't have respect. And point six, here you go, Richie. Who's telling the CFL story right now? I, I'm going to get to my report on the bubble, but here's a story for you. We're cleaning the house yesterday. Seemed like it was all weekend, Sunday and Monday. And I came across this box set, Darren, of CFL cards. Had it buried. You know how it is, right? Yep. Where is it? Historical box set, Grey Cup 100. This came out in the 2012 Grey Cup in Toronto. 100th season of CFL football, 100th Grey Cup handed out. Sat on the bed, went through this for like an hour. Was waiting to catch hell from my wife for just pausing the cleaning, right? All these cards, historical stadiums, Canadian National Exhibition Stadium where the Argos played and Blue Jays before Skydom. Classic players, Dieter Brock, Pinball Clements, classic builders, John Candy holding up an Argos helmet in 1991. Classic coaches, the Don. American CFL expansion, a card featuring the Memphis Mad Dogs helmet. This is the CFL in a box. Obviously, I couldn't put it down. Rosedale Park, Frank Clair Stadium, all these legend, every personalities, stories, teams that are now defunct. This is what made me fall in love with the Canadian Football League. This, this story, this history. And can I just ask you somewhat rhetorically, who's telling the CFL story right now? I know. No, I want an answer. I'm not letting you off the hook. Who's (laughs) telling the story? Nobody. You know, and I'm starting to see it a little more from the players, at least over the weekend. Uh, especially a lot of the American players who, um, you know, really thankful for their time in the CFL and, and, and all the happy Thanksgivings, right? But for the most part, it's not happening. The stories aren't being told. No, and I get CFL.ca. I was reading the league website this weekend. They were talking about classic Thanksgiving weekend games. I see CFL aired a buffet of football, CFL football. I'm not sure what day it was because the TVs in our house are all ripped apart because of Renos, and I had a TV blow up and all the rest. I just from the mainstream media, not the TSN isn't, but reporters, the guys that are supposed to be the storytellers of the CFL, who's telling the story of the CFL? Absolutely nobody. And it upsets me. Because this is what I love. This is the CFL I love. Not what's now, which is nothing. And the fact that they're not playing. Now, furthermore, I did spend most of the, not most of the weekend on the phone, a lot of the weekend on the phone with some CFL people piecing things together. And they are investigating. They're looking at Edmonton as a bubble city for 2021. Now, this is just, I put it on Twitter. I put it on Facebook. I put it on Instagram. It's just blowing up all over now. It's at least some news. And people are saying, well, if they can't have fans, I'm not interested. If they can't play now, why can they play next? Why could they play next year? And I'm saying they'll have a year and a half to think about it and plan. Okay, for one, this kind of just came upon them. Think about it. The pandemic exploded just before their season. They don't have unlimited resources like the major leagues. And by the way, The NLL, which I compare to a a business model to the CFL in terms of lower wages, they pulled the drapes, pulled the blinds, shut out the lights, and nobody noticed. But because it's the CFL, because they have this huge high profile, everybody is still wanting to know what's going on with them. And right now, they're like, please respect our privacy. And I'm trying to do that. But when I get a tip, a pretty good one, that they're discussing in Edmonton this week being a bubble city in 2021, I think it's prudent. I think it's positive. I think it's forward thinking on the current 
stakeholders of the CFL? Because who we don't know what the pandemic's going to look like come next spring. We have no idea. But I can tell you this, Darren, we're eight months into the pandemic, and what's Toronto limited for gatherings right now? Ten? What, what's going to make you think eight months from now it's going to be any different? So they should be investigating a bubble city one or two in the Canadian Football League for next year. This is positive news. Sorry. What do you think? No, it's absolutely positive news because we talk about, you know, how do you pull off a bubble for an extended period of time to do a long season, you know, and the fact that they're looking into it. This is the news we want to hear. This is positive news. Well, I think so. I think it's really positive. And you know what? It may never come to light. It may never happen. But it's great news to know that the CFL is exploring options because, you know, you're not just going to hit the perfect option that's going to work right away. you got to get through a few bad ideas. Kiss right? a few frogs. Exactly. So let us know that you're doing that because it gives us confidence that we're closer to the finish line. So this is something that they're talking about for whatever reason. They want to go about their business silently, and I just don't think that's a good way to go about it. But I'm not the spokesman for the CFL. I'm the spokesman for the Rod Peterson Show on Game Plus TV, and I answer to me, and I need my mandates to talk sports and be entertaining, and I think we're doing that. Their mandates to get on the field, and I hope that they're doing that. And they're trying, they're doing their thing. Yeah. But we're just, <laughs> we're not working together on it, and that's totally fine. Kelly McDonald, what's Kelly McDonald's deal? How about stop talking about LeBron James? He don't respect you guys with microphones, so don't need to hear about him. Who cares? He will sell himself to another team soon. I was trying to decide if he was on LeBron's side or not. Clearly not. Uh, the Edmonton viewers have just perked up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in a big way. <laughs> John in Edmonton. It's news I want to hear, but better if it came from the CFL slash Randy. They're not going to say it. If you notice, they're not saying anything. So, John, you're the one that wants updates all the time. You're the one writing in here 17 times a day wanting updates on the WHL and the NLL and the CFL. Well, they're not giving you any. So we got to do it. And I think it's better coming from the news reporters and not from the league. There is a, there is a time and place, though, for the league to step up. But, you know, leagues and teams, they want to control that media narrative. And when it comes from the site, you know, right from CFL.ca, when it comes from NFL.com, when it comes from... You don't you know, know whether you can Pat's trust it. Yeah. yeah, because they have to, you know, color it, you know, to fit their brand and fit their team and make sure the news is positive for them. You know, when you, you know, it's, it's why we follow people like Rod Peterson or Adam Schefter or Stephen A. Smith, because you know that those opinions aren't tainted by anybody, right? True dat. The news is news. True dat. Or at least this is what I'm hearing, but I have no reason to suspect that it's wrong. Well, I know for a fact they're meeting in Edmonton about a bubble scenario for Edmonton for next year. I know that. Whether it happens or not, uh, well, I, I, I'm praying. They have to play. The players want to play. The coaches want to coach. What this league looks like by between now and then is, a, is a t another discussion. That's what the owners and presidents need to figure out. But that's what they're working on. Okay. Can we go to the comment? Is it too late for uh, Norway? Can you guys find that? The comments are coming in fast and furious here. Norway calling. I'd like to see the CFL cards back on the public market. Great memories for you to suggest others do this again. I agree with you on LeBron. Let the play do the talking. I would not have done what I've done in my music career if I kept demanding respect. A fiddle friend and my younger brother told me years ago, your work in music speaks for you. That's what kept me level-headed through the years. Stay well, everyone. That's Trent in Norway. Well, by the way, there are CFL cards. Who's that quarterback in BC? Second or third stringer? Clark, help me out, please. We follow him on Instagram. It's not Daniel Bryan. Uh, Arndt. Yeah, Will Arndt. Will Arndt. He just put his uh, photo on Instagram the other day of his BC Lions trading card for 2020. I believe it was upper deck. So there are CFL cards. I haven't bought cards in decades. But again, I stumbled across these and dang, I got misty-eyed. This is the CFL I love. Where'd it go? Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> now we got everybody going. We got a few minutes left here in warm-up. Let's go right back. Uh, hang on, John Van Leuven says, why Edmonton? 
I'll say this. Why not? That should be Edmonton's new slogan. Why Instead not? of City of Champions at the... Welcome to Edmonton, City of Champions. Welcome to Edmonton. Why not? Hey. Yes. <laughs> why, why not, Edmonton? Worked for the NHL bubble. For the NHL, they did it very well with that. Anyways, going back to point one of the Quick Six Show topics. Taylor Hall's a saver. It was like a where were you moment, like when Elvis died or they landed on the moon. Where were you when Taylor Hall signed with the Buffalo Sabres? I was at the water slides. Couldn't believe it. I know. I know. I love it. I love it. I know a lot of people are like, what are they doing? What's Taylor Hall doing? This isn't going to fix them. You look at their roster. They're a pretty good hockey team. They've got a lot of weapons. <laughs> now, in terms okay. of you know the business and, and structure of that whole organization, it's been a dumpster fire for a little while. Yeah. They need to make sure goaltending's figured out. Their back end has to get cleaned up. But you know, Taylor Hall, if he plays alongside Jack Eichel, I mean there's a great, you know, optimism, you know, and good reason to have success. But if you look back, I mean Taylor Hall over the last three or four years hasn't played more than thirty games. He's only hit eighty points once in his career. Or, or 90 points once in his career. He's only scored 30 goals once. Um, but he hasn't played a full season since he won the Hart Trophy. So if he plays a full year, and he's always been kind of close to a point-of-game kind of player, there's no reason to think that he couldn't be back to that form. And at $8 million, if he's going to give you anywhere, you know, among league leader numbers or anywhere in that Hart Trophy conversation, it's a bargain at $8 million, right? So here's hoping on a one-year deal, there's low risk, right, for, for Buffalo. It's just one year. For Taylor Hall, he's kind of banking on himself that he can stay healthy for a year and, uh, and put up some numbers. I think it's a win-win. I saw the interview with Taylor Hall this morning. There was a clip of it on SportsCenter, and uh, he said, this is what was best for me financially and term. And as much as I hate to hear that, and I do think Taylor Hall is a me-first guy, that's the way they all look at it right now. Uh, by the way, loyalty. They're upset in Vegas about loyalty. Here's Taylor Hall saying, I signed in Buffalo for one year for $8 because it was best for me. That's what it is now. Why is everybody surprised? Can we finish this segment on the Golden Knights being upset at a lack of loyalty? Listen, I get that you're upset about it. Who doesn't want to have bosses that are not loyal to you? But it's the way that it is. And you just have to look at Marc-Andre Fleury in the playoffs. They just got to look down the end of the hall at a lack of loyalty. How is this news to them? What am I missing? And it's my team. I know. I know. <laughs> like, like, I don't understand what's, you know, what they're not understanding. I get the, the loyalty side of it and, it. and it actually makes me feel good that they're upset on the lack of loyalty because I want more of that in the game. I want more of you know, less business and more of, you know what? We got there. We got to the dance. Let's just work with the guys we have to get a little bit better and keep improving, and we'll get there. And it'll feel so good, and it'll be so great. But that's just me being romantic and going against everything I say, I say about being self-aware and understanding the world we actually live in. Lollipops that, and unicorns. That doesn't exist. Doesn't I wish it, so it, get over it. I wish it did. Like Monty says, get over it. Monty had it right all along. So to cut you off. No. Who knew? Who knew? Jason Strudwick next. Peter Labardius on the way. Braden Coburn. We're cracking the lid on a brand new week. And breaking news today, Edmonton being t discussed as a bubble city for the CFL in 2021. This has been the warm-up. You're watching the RP Show across North America on Game Plus TV Network, Facebook Live, and listen live at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media 